एंड कैन आई हैव सम रिएक्शंस राइट हाउ हाउ डू आई नो आप लोग ठीक हो के नहीं हो राइट सम मोर आई गेस ओके वी आर हैविंग फ्यू गुड रिएक्शंस परफेक्ट परफेक्ट सो या गाइस सी आई इज मोस्टली द फॉर्मेट सेम रहेगा वी विल बी हैविंग अ लेक्चर बाय मोहित सर अगेन एंड बिफोर दैट लेट्स जस्ट टेस्ट योर नॉलेज Last time even we had a quiz, so I'll say एक बार फिर से करते हैं right for a better revision with new questions for sure and I have uh, again a surprise for you guys and this time it's equal it's for the interns as well as for the people who are joining us through the value added course on YouTube so I guess you can stay tuned for that right so can we have the quiz live right great 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 so guys I guess you would be having a link in uh, your chat if not there in your whatsapp group if it's a value added course and yes you can start you guys can use the code also yeah so we'll just start like as soon as like the maximum audience joins so i'll just we'll wait for 4 to 5 minutes even at the google meet i see not all the interns have joined so okay but not good let's ओके हाउ मेनी डू वी हैव जॉइनिंग रेट समृद्धि आई गेस इट्स 18 और आई एम रॉन्ग यप 18 गूगल मीट पे 34 हैं तो लाइक हाउ कैन आई इवन स्टार्ट यार और अभी YouTube तो ओके okay, YouTube की जनता प्रॉपर सो रही है इस कि यहीं पे होने से तो नहीं गाइस यू हैव टू जॉइन इट्स अ पार्ट सी इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ द कोर्स एंड मेनी ऑफ यू कांटेक्टेड लाइक यू कैन जॉइन द लेक्चर देयर आर सम इश्यूज सी आई विल बी ऑनेस्ट If it's an emergency, nobody can help, right? So okay, we understand that. But see, not doing these things, not being a part of it, eventually you will get affected from it. And it's not even long term. Bad kar raha. Jaise kya the the na ki bade hoge to pata lagega. Nahi, bhai. Tenth ke aur training module ends up. Eleventh of August your execution phase starts. This is where you realize ki kitna zaruri tha for the revision, for other things, right? So there's a reason to it. And anybody from the value added course. उनके लिए तो बहुत ही जरूरी है बिकॉज दीज आर द पैरामीटर जिससे हम आपको जज कर रहे होंगे इवेंचुअली कि विल यू बी गेटिंग एन ऑफर ऑफ द इंटर्नशिप और नॉट सो या अप टू यू फॉर श्योर एनी वेज लाइक ओके आई गेस वील स्टार्ट एट अराउंड एट एट सेवन आई गेस वील स्टार्ट एनी वेज वी कॉन्ट ले वेट फॉर दैट मच लॉन्गर वी हैव अ लॉट ऑन द स्केड्यूल आई गेस सो या
ओके सो लाइक लास्ट आई स्पोक टू यू गाइस इट वाज 19 इट्स 45 तो यार ठीक है गुड रिस्पांस आई गेस यार एक और मिनट वेट करेंगे एट मैक्स इधर इट्स अ 1 मिनट मोर और इट्स 50 प्लस द मोमेंट इज दैट वी स्टार्ट विद द क्विज आई गेस दैट इज गुड कैन आई हैव सम रिएक्शन ऑन इट लाइक हाउ डू आई नो इफ इट्स ओके नहीं है तो प्लीज वही बताइए राइट Perfect, 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 great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Samrithi, we start like as soon as we hit a fifty or at eight eight, right? Yep. Let's wait oh. for another minute. Yep. I guess Samrithi, you can start. We should stay to our word. Right. So has it started? All right, guys, starting now. Just a second, guys. There are new participants who have joined, so I'll just share the link once again. All right. All the best, everybody. Ankita was killing it before. Now we have Aaron Gurg. Okay, with a streak of three. That's great. Perfect, perfect, great. Prom, very prompt responses. So, Samriti, are we done, or there are some more left? There are some more left. Let's okay, let's, let's just wait for them. I guess eight fifteen, eight seventeen. I guess we can wait. Yep. For sure.
some of you guys have not even started so if you could if anybody wants to do that they can do that right now Okay, so I guess the prom quiz, I guess that helps gushing up with all the revision and all. So let's have a look at the leaderboard. So on top we have Pankaj Yadav. Oh, it's also a tie. Okay, so okay, alphabetically who are but the top four are Pankaj Yadav, Charu Kohli, Ishan Atre and Vansh Agarwal. Applaud for you. Okay, we have now Kritika as well. Achha, quiz chal rahi hai. I might have just intervened at the wrong time. Yeah, is it left? I guess we can discuss. So, okay, we have top five people with uh, all the answers, right? Okay, great job. So, I guess we can discuss the questions. I guess, Samriti, can we can we do that? Yeah, sure. Also, the ranking is based on the score, which also which is also determined by how fast they answer. Okay, okay, that. Yeah. Okay, okay. We can give it to Pankaj Yadav, Pankaj bro. Okay, you rock, bro. The first, so wherever you are, you have joined us through a valid course or you are in the Google Meet. Over to you guys. I guess we can have some applause for all the people who have got all their answers right and all of you, maybe in the chat, guys. Yeah, that that that's the spirit. That's the spirit. Great. Maybe a few more. Maybe a few more. Yeah. Okay. That's great. That's great. That's great. Love it. Great. Great. I guess somebody we can walk uh, to the question segment. राइट मतलब एंड में सीखना ही तो है गलत हुआ कोई नहीं एंड में सीख जाते हैं काम आएगा राइट ओके तो यार दिस वन यार आई एम नॉट टेम्प्ट द क्विज एंड माय टीम हैज मेड इट सब उनके एफर्ट्स हैं तो द स्क्रीन जस्ट चेंज समथिंग शुड वी शुड वी एंड द क्विज बिकॉज़ देयर सम पीपल हु इज स्टिल अटेम्प्टिंग आई गेस कोई नहीं आई गेस वी कैन डिस्कस द क्वेश्चन आल्सो कोई नहीं ऑलराइट सो आई विल एंड द क्विज We'll start with the questions. So, yeah, see, I don't know what the answer is, right? So, I'll go to Janta Gaegi. So, people in the Google Meet, you can uh, have answer it in the chat, and people on YouTube, right? You can answer in YouTube YouTube chat, right? So, I guess we can move on to the questions. Can we, Samriddhi? Yep, just a second. No issues.
So guys, I guess there was some issue with the site. We can't uh, present it. Anyways, let's not just wait. So I have the questions with me, right? So I'll just start, and you can guys, you guys can start uh, answering in the chat. Eric, them retro, rokte, right? Let's keep it retro. So the first question, the Right to Information Act, two thousand five, applies to which level of government in India? I have four options with me: the central government, the state government, both central as well as state government. Or the local governments, panchayats and municipalities only. So, what's the answer to it, guys? Okay, I'm seeing chat. It is central and state, central and state. मतलब सब गलत गाइड कर रहे हैं, सभी स्मार्ट हैं यहाँ पे. I really want. चलो, चलो आई गो विद ऑप्शन सी. Both central as well as the state government. Samriti, is it the right answer? Can I know? Samridhya, am I audible? Chalo, thank you, Karthik. I guess you can guide us here, right? You have the answers with you, right? I guess. Perfect, perfect. I'll just move on to the next question, guys. Okay. So it is around. Which of the following information is exempted from disclosure under Section Eight of the RTI Act? So I'll repeat the question: Which of the following information is exempted from disclosure under Section 8 of the RTI Act? Mohit sir dis did discuss in class that you can't I ask anything. There has to be some limitation. Ab nuclear codes nahi mang loge. Matlab 10 rupees mein nuclear codes to nahi mil rahe. Kisi bhi desh ke nahi mil rahe. Hamare ko. Kisi bhi question karne chahiye actually. Right. So the options are information related to corruption and human rights violations. Option one. Option two is information that affects the sovereignty and integrity of the of India. Option C is information related to public expenditure and fund utilization, and D is information related to environmental issues and pollution. What's the answer, guys? Okay, okay. ठीक है, perfect. Answer B. Thank you. So, guys, in the meanwhile, I'd like to say Mohit sir has joined us. So, hello, Mohit sir. I'm audible to you. Okay, I guess he'll be soon joining us. So, okay, I guess we can start in some time. Rest quiz, khatam karte hain. Agla question kya tha? So, any any of you guys, you remember the questions? I do have it in front of me, but okay. Let's test your memory. If anyone knows, I'll wait for some twenty seconds. Okay, please, Shantanu, can I know about it? Give a rough answer, I'll say. Put to your memory, my brother. I respect it. Okay, so the question is: the right to information is a fundamental right guaranteed under which article of the Indian Constitution? Which article of the Indian Constitution gives us right to information as a fundamental right? Here are our options. So I, I'll twist the options. ठीक है किसी को रट्टा रट्टा नहीं मारा हो किसी ने. So first option is Article thirty two. Second is twenty one. Third is nine Article nineteen one a and fourth is Article fourteen. So your answer, guys. And I need the article this time. Okay. Great, great. Article nineteen one a. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Great, great, great responses, guys. Great responses. Okay, so I guess we'll uh, end soon. Okay, what's the question? Yeah, it's which of the following entities is not covered under the definition of public authority under the RTA Act? See, its options are here, but I would like if you give a straight answer. Batao. Let's make it a bit tougher, right? Okay, I'm okay. Great, I'm getting anyone want who has a different answer. Maybe guys, I saw man, me बोले कि यार हमने गलत कुछ बनाई थी. Maybe, just saying. चलो, great, great. ठीक है. The last one is I guess. Let me check. Yeah. So the RTI Act provides protection to which of the following entities against victimization? I'll repeat. The RTI Act 
provides protection to which of the following entities against victimization so number 1 public information officers two whistleblowers three third party information providers or four public authorities can i have your answers okay great responses in the youtube chat guys okay यार मतलब आई वाज एक्सपेक्टिंग यार कोई तो कुछ गलत बोलेगा सभी स्मार्ट है क्या कर सकते हैं एनीवेज सो आई गेस दिस वाज इट एंड आई गेस आई हैव एन अनाउंसमेंट मेड इदर इट्स दिस और बिटवीन द लेक्चर और पोस्ट दिस बाय द वे सर मोहित सर डू वी हैव यू आई एम ऑडिबल टू यू वेरी गुड इवनिंग हमीर आई एम ऑडिबल परफेक्ट सर ग्रेट सो गाइस वी हैव मोहित सर अगेन विद अस I guess he does not need an introduction. His previous lecture was the same for it. So I'll I'll say I'll just pass on the baton to you, sir. Over to you. Thank you. First of all, a very good evening to each and every one of you. And it's a privilege to join you people once again. And I will be starting from where I have left last time. But before that, do we have any questions? Or I think first we should conduct this particular lecture. and later on we can have a doubt session in case that requires a very good evening to each and every one of you once again so after the conclusion of that particular rti lecture that we had so let's build over it now there were few valuable points that have been left and that were concerned with the factual parts just for example the act came into force way back in the year 2005 that to on the 12th of october and it replaced the act which was earlier known for the freedom of right to information act 2002 now proceeding further what have been the scope of this act earlier the act was totally available it was totally having the jurisdiction across all the states but the state of jnk has been kept outside the purview of the act but right after we had an amendment in the constitution of india after the jammu and kashmir reorganization act certainly we have got the approach that now the rti act will be applicable throughout india so jnk will be coming under the purview of it from now onwards now we are having numerous phases that can be elaborated upon but before going over that there was one more thing that has been left by mistakenly in the previous lecture of mine and that was what is the appellate mechanism of the filing of these rti acts of these rti request of the rti complaints just in case if you are lodging a request to a pio and he is not able to deliver the correct information or is denying you so what is the scope after that do we have any appellate mechanism anybody uh nitish that is fine you are quoting a section but right after that can you elaborate upon it that what could be the authorities because section number it is fine as far as you are quoting the law but other way round we need to look after that what is the substance of that particular section do anybody has any idea regarding that sir i think we can complain in the central information commission that's a very bold step but don't you think there are other ways also parmeet because what i personally know about my student that harmeet has lodged many rtis yeah devanshi please go ahead oh uh, can we uh, like we can file a petition in the court look as far as the journal law for land is concerned so courts judicial system tribunals they are already into motion so that is fair enough but for what particular purpose the act has been initiated why it has been introduced probably there have been something right yeah misha a uh, sir we can file the appeal at the cic <coughs> chief information commissioner there only we have to file the appeal if the information has not been given during a particular time period well surprisingly i believe the full form of cic it is central information commission right yes sir okay so look as far as the modus operandi is concerned in case if the pio of a designated public authority is not providing you the information either he is delaying 
in order to provide you the information or there's a complete denial or misinformation has been provided to you or certain information without any reasonable cause. They are not able to provide you the exact data which you are looking for. So appellate mechanism has been provided within the act itself. So first you can appeal the very first appeal that you can make that can be directly going to the senior officer over the PIU who has been designated by the public authority. And the second appeal can be lodged directly to CIC or SIC, either the Central Information Commission or the State Information Commission. And both of them are having parallel jurisdiction. Now, as we have initiated a talk over CIC and SIC, what can be the rules, what can be the powers and functions of these authorities? Because if they have been provided with such much reputation, they have been provided with enormous powers, they have been provided with such a designation under the act itself. So what is your prudence? Whatever has been written in the law, that is one thing. What knowledge textbooks and reference books provides to you people, that is altogetherly an enormous substance that you're having for your approach. But what's your basic understanding? If you apply your prudence, what could have been the powers? Just in case you people have been the law framers, you have been the policy makers. So what sort of knowledge, what sort of applicability of the very educative alliances that you have in your mind, you will be putting there. What will be the powers or functions you'll be giving to these authorities? Anybody? Because I believe this is our last lecture for this series. So it should be an attractive one so that we can remember it for the lifetime to come. And I'll be more than happy if someone of you will be providing me the answer today. Just apply your common sense, the very prudence, the legal knowledge that you have. Parmeet? Yes, sir. I guess you called my name the first time I was uh, busy charging my phone. Can you please repeat the question? I just joined. No, I don't want you to answer. Just ask all the interns that we are having because I'm having very high hopes from these people and I literally owe each and every single word. Just apply your mind. What could have been the powers? What could have been the functions? These guys, we appreciate answers. They may be wrong. They may be right. Eventually we learn. Just motivation is started this all. So, hey, sir, someone is asking you to repeat the question, but these guys, wrong answers do, no answers don't. Thank you. What could have been the probable functions, the powers of SCIC and CIC? Under the act. Okay, I think. Let me present. Sir, I think. Uh, I yeah, think that um, their responsibility should be to release the information that are related uh, related to the public funds and the information that uh, the information about the work of the government officials and offices. But let's suppose you're targeting a specific public authority. So how come CIC or SCIC will be having that particular power? How they will be having that data? So there's certain other lines on which you should answer this question, right? Yeah, Devyanshi. Uh, they can probably look after the matter, like what information is being seeked, and then they can probably take the cognizance of the matter and give the data or information. Well... Thanks for answering at least, but uh, this is not a threadbare analysis, I must say. Yeah, Pushpendra. Uh, they must have the power just like uh, normal courts do to like uh, get the evidence on record, summon people and like decide the complaints on that basis which are filed against certain authorities. One way could be that. Now let's do one thing. Let's threadbare this particular analysis, right? So as far as the powers and functions are concerned, so one thing that I have already disclosed to you that there is a pallet mechanism that has been provided. So all the appeals can be going therein with respect to the dissatisfaction that you people are having. The sort of unsatisfactory behavior that you are facing from these public authorities. So your second appeal can be lodged therein, fine. Now moving over that, there have been numerous functions that have been provided under the act all the compliances, all the provisions. So whose duty it will be? At every time, wherever there will be a rising of cause of action. So court and the judicial machinery should not be coming in between for the rescue. Because certainly in a country which is having on record 135 crore people living. So how the things will be managed? That's why we are having a specific legislation for it. And that's make it as a special legislation. So certainly 
all the provision that have been provided certainly all the compliances which have been mentioned under the act whose duty it is it is the duty of cic and sic fair enough now there is one more power now all these authorities which have been mentioned under the act cic and sic they have been deemed to be a civil court and just in case if they have been deemed to be a civil court so what does that mean what could be the interpretation of it can anybody put light upon this issue Yeah, I think when the uh, official or public authority refuses to disclose our information to us, uh, we can file and face uh, file a suit against them in their authority. Okay, you people must have visited court, or you must have understand the subject matter of judicial system in India and courts. It's highly possible that many of you must be from the second year or first year. Though I'm not having any present data upon that, I haven't filed an RTI to Harmeet right now for it. But there's one thing for very sure that at least you must be having an idea. So if we say that a particular authority or a particular designated body or an entity is deemed to be a civil court, so that means there is a legal fiction upon it. What are the powers of civil court? What do you understand by civil court? First, tell me that. Again, okay. guys, I would request wrong answers would do no answers. Thank you, Devanshia. Please. Uh, so civil courts basically look into the matters like the civil cases. So matters like wherein um. An offense like a wrong has been committed by an individual against another individual, whereas in criminal courts we generally see criminal cases where an individual commits a wrong against the entire society. That is fair enough. But let's suppose that you are a court, and let's suppose that you are a civil court or you are a civil judge, junior division, senior division, whatever as the case may be. How you will ensure justice? Just merely by sitting on the seat of Satyamev Jayate. Or you require certain powers in order to do the act of justice. Uh, yeah, so basically, there. Devanshi, wait a second. Pushpendra, you go ahead. So you must have the powers to summon uh, individuals who are connected with the case. The power to take evidence on record, so that you can effectively decide the issue and render exactly. judgments. Exactly. Render judgments which are logical. Exactly. So, in order to render complete justice to the conflicting parties, to make an example in the society by delivering the art of justice to the greatest extent possible, so these powers are of primary concern: the power to summon somebody, to issue warrants, to require for the permission of discovery, in order to do foreclosures. So, each and every thing is required. So, all the powers which have been given to the civil court. By virtue of the Code of Civil Procedure, nineteen zero eight, so the same power will be applicable upon these two authorities as well. So that is the basic crux, because until and unless you will not be having the power, so how come you will be able to take the bold steps? How you will be delivering the justice to the grassroots levels? Fine. Now the Act also talks about two specific things, and these are fines and penalties. Yeah, Devanshi. Uh, I had a question that if they are acting as a civil court, do they also have the power to like um, you know give uh, ask for like damages? Like, can they ask one party to give damages? Like, to the I was individual? coming over to that itself because acts provides for two things. First is penalty, and second is the fees that you need to pay. So whenever there is a subject matter of penalty. so penalty can be related to the act of damages now whether it will be unliquidated damages or liquidated damages that will be altogetherly a different thing but as far as the fees under the act is concerned so a reasonable fees needs to be paid by the citizen who will be able to provide a request who will be able to provide a complaint in order to seek information for the disclosure and that fees for today's time being is rupees 10 now as far as penalties are concerned then they can be inflicted provide the fact of the information which you are requiring for first of all what is the timeline of obtaining such information the timeline is as soon as you file the rti so expeditiously 
that PIO should be placing on record the information which you are demanding, unless that is coming under the ambit of any exemption. Certainly, but there should be an upper limit over that, right? So that upper limit goes up till 30 days, until unless that PIO is having any reasonable cause with him. And if there is non-applicability of reasonable cause, then the concerned case will be coming on the ground of delay. And if there is a delay, so for that appeal can be filed. If the information has been outrightly rejected without any exemption, then also you can file an appeal. Provide the fact wrong information has been provided to you. For that, you can file an appeal. Other way around, if after asking the information from the public authorities, from the PIOs who have been designated therein, and they have destroyed that public information, still you are having the right to file the appeal, either to his senior first, then the second appeal may go to SIC or CIC. So this is the procedure that has been laid down under the act itself. Any question till now? Yeah, Pushpendra. So is there any substantial difference in the power convert on SIC and CIC? Uh, actually, there was a breakage in the connection. Can you repeat it? Sir, is there any substantial difference between the powers conferred upon SIC and CIC? The act lays down a very peculiar difference over that. But certainly, both are operating at different levels. But as far as the appellate jurisdiction is concerned, then it is concurrent in nature. It is up to you that where you will be filing that particular appeal. But as we know that in country like India, we are having a different system altogether. So Central Information Commission is having more powers when it comes to the meritoriousness of the very functions power they are having. So for that, we'll be doing a critical analysis of the act itself. And there are important sections that need to be discovered therein. Fine. Thank you, sir. Now, moving over to the most substantial part of today's lecture. Earlier, we have went through various judicial precedents. But judicial precedents, fair enough. I believe that law being a branch of social science, because many jurists have placed their compliance over it. So it is better to also relate to the case studies, other than that, merely the judicial precedents. And case studies could be of two types. First, the general case studies that are available in the open source data that we have, either on internet, just Google out the things out, you will be getting the information. Other are the specific case studies that relates to our life. So first, let's start with the general case studies. How many case studies have you came across regarding RTI that has changed the life of the people? Because the kind of internship of which you people have been part of, which I have been briefed by the Harmeet in the very first go, that certainly you will be making stories. You will be meeting the cartoonistic arts so that you will be making stories for a particular book, right? So how many case studies you people have gone through that has changed the life of people? It has impacted the society in a very positive sense. Any case study from your end, please? Yeah, you people want me to pinpoint someone, though that is not. I would urge you guys, sir, if I don't interrupt. Yeah. I would urge you guys, anything. Okay, case study shayad bahut badi chiz. Chalo, we have something common, Commonwealth Games, but post that, anything you heard about RTI, like ha, apse, I guess we didn't even have a proper ice breaking session. So tell us that what do you understand about RTI? Anything. Or write to information like doge na chalega. So I guess sir, pehle to Commonwealth Games hi, but ha, all of you guys. In the YouTube chat and the live chat of Google Meet, please. Arvid, I think that uh, we should respect the time and here people are for learning process, right? So let's have an elaborated study. Yeah, Pushpendra, please go ahead. So, uh, case studies in terms of how in certain cases, uh, RTA has been very like instrumental. Yes, indeed. So cases like 2G scam and everything? It may be included over that. Other uh, society scams, so these are some of the examples that are very famous in terms of, I have not gotten into the depth of it, how it like uh, very, was very instrumental, but I know that uh, it was it's, uh, like involved there. So these are certain cases that I've heard of. Okay, let's do one thing. Let's 
go through certain case studies for today's lecture and the first case study that i will be starting with it is something related to the information with respect to unveiling the bpl scam so what is bpl you people must be having an idea below poverty line cards where there are certain amount of people there is a certain class of people who are suffering a lot in their lives and the government provides for certain goods for them so that they can have a very healthy survival because equality and equity they are the intrinsic part of our constitution and they frames the very ultimate foundation that we have for a welfare state because why we say that india is a welfare state because our government look after it so the people who are in the need they have been provided with the bpl cards so certainly what has been discovered in rajasthan even the wealthy persons they were able to get these bpl cards and the persons who literally belong to this class they were not having the same so there was the proper laborer by the name of mohan lal he lodged an rti way back after 2005 and it has been suspected as soon as the information has been received and carved out from a public authority that yeah there have been so much hampering with respect to the data and the persons who literally deserve their rights who literally deserve these substance from the government who need to have these type of goods for their healthy survival because india is a welfare state after filing of this rti a lot of data came on record and a strict action has been came into the forefront what is the end result of this case study once we are done with all the case studies i will tell you that just make me remember in case if i forgot so that is the serving of the people from the very grassroots level because before this particular act people were not having the power to lodge such a kind of complaint in order to ask for the very rights that belong to them so in a way people are doing a supervision over their own rights earlier there was nothing like that there have been exemptions and just by placing those exemptions the right picture was not coming to the forefront now certainly these case studies have not been provided under the acts that's need to be analyzed by various news articles by various blogs that you go through by various other resources that are reliable and authentic in nature so just take a note of this so the first case study is relating to the unveiling of bpl scam in rajasthan now coming over to the second case study that was the mid day meal scam and this case literally relates to the union territory of delhi so in indian schools exactly what we are having the best part way out is the government has initiated the plan for mid day meal in school curriculums but the kind of substandard food that has been served therein nobody was taking the action neither it was the government nor it was the bureaucracy nor it was the legislative framers nor even the judiciary because the cases were not able to get into that particular forum so how come the justice could be delivered but the rti was lodged by the students itself because they are also deemed to be citizens of this country and right after filing the rti in this particular regard a proper mid day scheme scam has been came on record that yeah the quality of the food that is getting served in these schools in the name of mid day meal it was so much substandard and once the picture came on record the quality the quantity as well as the proper decorum and the modus operandi for these foods and services in the name of mid day meal has been improved without intervention of anybody now moving forward over that there was one more case study that was relating to unmasking the ghost employees what do you understand by ghost employees first anybody do you have any idea who are the ghost employees yeah shantanu so those employees who have joined the duty but are uh, not attending the work but exactly. are not doing the shantanu you are from which state so up you are from up fair enough so certainly this has been a very big scam in the state of bihar and the unmasking of ghost employees have been done so people have been present on record but as far as their working was concerned they were not even attending the offices and when the attendance data when the sort of works the functions and all the regulations which they have placed on record came to the forefront there was nothing like that so there was mass suspension that has been done because many a times we say that government employees are not performing up to the mark but after the arrival of the rti act 
the things have came to the forefront now they are under the purview of the supervision of the citizens because as i already mentioned it is a game of taxes we are paying heavy taxes so that our country can become the best country available and once our machinery will be into that particular motion only after that will be doing wonders so the things have improved even in the government sectors either directly or indirectly that is all together with the debate that we have nowadays more or less now there has been ensuring accountability in infrastructure projects now i remember do we have soyab today last time he asked a question from me i remember can somebody check is soyab present today okay let's proceed with it sir i just take he is not available okay so no, should no, i take no. his question or i should do just for sure sir you please man he asked that whether the private contractors which have been hired by the government whether they will also be coming under the purview of the rti act can somebody answer me this question because i will be answering this particular question on a different tangent and for that you need to apply your judicial mind first can somebody answer this question yeah shantanu sir i think the private contractor who been appointed by the government can come under the purview of the iti because they have been appointed by the government and they are working on the public funds any other answer yeah misha Uh, sir according to me i may be wrong but according to me uh, these uh, private contractors uh, should not came under uh, the purview of rti just because of the fact uh, rti uh, relates to right to information which is for the public good and these private contractor uh, is not of that much degree of public interest so it should not be came under the purview of rti according to me recently in my college i have taught law of torts and under the purview of law of tort we have discussed one more thing first kavya you proceed with your answer so uh, uh, so i wanted to answer the question okay hello that is also fine uh nahi uh, like i am i audible right now yes you are audible Yes, so yeah, I feel that private contract uh, contractors and their steps will come under the uh, RTI Act because these uh, uh, private contractors take tenders to act uh, uh, on building government property, and when they are not building government government property, uh, they are building private property, but under the guidelines of the government and using the public property to build it. Uh, so they would be coming under, uh, and they would be answerable to the common public through RTI. well first of all i would like to answer in the next tangent so just apply your judicial mind first as once as my student i know about it so he is just able to replicate the vicarious liability which we have discovered or which we have discussed in our law of tort classes so there are two things first there is contract of service and there is contract for service do anybody know the reason what is the difference between contract of service and contract for service yeah pushpendra सो बेसिकली इट्स अबाउट द डिग्री ऑफ कंट्रोल के कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फॉर सर्विस में हमने बोल दिया कि घर बनाओ अब तुम कौन सा मटेरियल लगाओगे किसको किससे घर बनवाओगे वो तुम्हारी झंझट है लेकिन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑफ सर्विस में आया हुआ रिलेटिवली लार्जर डिग्री ऑफ कंट्रोल सिमिलरली सर वो इंडिपेंडेंट कॉन्ट्रेक्टर में जब गवर्नमेंट काम दे रही है उनको तो आधे अंडर डायरेक्ट कंट्रोल ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट एंड नॉट सर वो वाला इशू बनेगा देखो इट्स अ गेम ऑफ प्रमोशन एंड एज फार एज दिस पर्टिकुलर scenario is concerned regarding the private contractors trust me it is a gray area because already cases have been going into the pendency we don't have a very valuable judgment over it right now so it is a gray area so in the whenever the government issues the tender so whosoever will be submitting the tender in the name of a private contractor so they need to list down each and everything regarding the stages of that particular project what sort of funding they will be allocating to the raw materials for the execution part for all the other resources that may be replicated therein so each and everything needs to be in so much detail and that is the modus operandi in order to take the control over the work that has been allocated by the government but the cases of private contractors they comes within the purview of contract 
for services because government will be providing them the tender but the degree of control is still less so directly you may be filing an rti request or rti complaint to these private contractors that could be the one way and as there is a gray area so there is no certainty over that but on the other hand for whom these private contractors are working they are working for the government the government is having each and everything in great detail they must be taking all the records they must be taking all the progress reports that what has been the situation with respect to the project that is going on so government being the public authority will be providing you the authentic information and just in case if they fails to provide you so you're having the mechanism to file your appeals so that is altogetherly the bigger picture that we have for today's time so one such thing was ensuring the accountability in infrastructure project now this is was the case of maharashtra and after filing the rti with respect to the work that has been allocated to the private contractors the project was not getting over within the deadline provided by these governments and all so certainly when rti was placed so there has been misallocation of funds there have been misallocation of various other resources the deadline came to the forefront that how come the project which needs to be completed two or three years back it is taking beyond 15 or 20 years so what is the reason behind that and after the certainly all the steps have been taken into motion in order to register the project timeline and a due course of action was initiated so that it was the rti act itself that came for the rescue and to the forefront in order to render justice to the society because these infrastructure projects they make the bound lines of all the things that we are having in terms of growth of our nation because a nation can be as good as its infrastructure once we have the infrastructure things can be improvised from that particular level so it is the foundation stone so these were the case studies though there is one more case study that was relating to public distribution system but i will be providing you something over that so this was it now i think that this is the right time to take a break of 5 to 10 minutes after that we can have certain other paradigms that could be discussed and in case if there will be any doubts i'll be clearing each and every of your doubt query question whatever it is amit will that be fine absolutely fine sir hope i'm audible yeah yeah you are indeed audible so let's have a break of 5 to 10 minutes whatever suits you people so we'll just conclude it perfect perfect sir can we like what time would you prefer like 9:5 or i think let's start at 9:5 so that we can have the last okay. so that will be fair enough great guys so like we have to still stay in the meet or on youtube live but uh, we are having a short break and in the break you know what you have to do mark yourself for the attendance soon a google form link would be shared in your chats respective chats and the word for today okay so the word for today is aor uh, like can i have the form link shared anyone okay they'll be sharing soon so the word for today guys is ha huh, perfect perfect so the word for today is aor advocate on record as you guys know so as bus simple si cheez aor ye teen akshar likhiye please get your attendance done same applies to everyone watching it from youtube and theek uh, hai just come from that and i have a surprise for you guys but first the attendance and as soon as attendance gets over is i guess uh, i can have some thumbs up or a reaction so i can know so I, then i'll talk about the surprise perfect perfect let everyone get their attendance done
texting me more than me my team ki you weren't able to put your attendance the quiz like got short things around that see quiz ki to main baat alag se karunga usse pehle about the attendance and even before that guys if you have an issue specifically regarding attendance and quiz and things around that i think we give enough time 10 minutes are more than enough for anyone who's like ओके से एटलीस्ट मेजर कि आप एक टेन मिनट्स का टेन क्वेश्चन फिल कर पाओ टेन मिनट्स में राइट सो आई गेस टाइम ज्यादा है इट वॉज द टेस्ट इज इवेंचुअली टू सी कि वेदर आर यू अटेंटिव और नॉट सो या दैट वॉज द बेसिक टेस्ट अलॉन्ग विद नोइंग लाइक हाउ मच हैव यू लर्न अबाउट आर टी आई सो सी एंड मोस्ट ऑफ यू लाइक बहुत लोग ना कुछ इंटेलेक्चुअल से रीजन ले आते हैं कि यार ऐसे बोलेंगे तो नहीं होगा तो हम नोट्स बना रहे थे नोट्स बना रहे थे ठीक है So guys, I'll ask someone to pin this in the YouTube chat also, and Google पर तो मैं ही डाल रहा हूँ. So आप में से जो भी notes बना रहे थे, please send your notes to the email ID below, right? And trust me, guys, if there were some really good notes, so I would be posting on the social media handle. And this is an announcement, right? Okay, not the bigger one, but yeah, this is the announcement. If you are making notes and आपके notes अगर अच्छे हैं, तो right, हम चाहेंगे और लोगों को पता लगे R T A के बारे में, and ओके व्हाट वुड बी बेटर कि आप दो तीन घंटे के लेक्चर्स से पहले आप कुछ नोट्स पढ़ लीजिए सो या यू कैन जस्ट सेंड योर नोट्स इन द ईमेल सेक्शन एंड आई प्रोवाइड द ईमेल लिंक फॉर दैट एंड आई टीम विल सी टू इट राइट सो दैट द थिंग बाकी देखो नोट्स को मैंने रख दिया कि इंटेलेक्चुअल बात थी कि मैं इतना सीरियस था मैं नोट्स बना रहा था चलो एड्रेसिंग दैट बट देन देर वॉज अदर थिंग कि मैं इधर चला गया था लाइक ओके ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ रीजन राइट हम सब स्मार्ट है रीजन बनाने के लिए तो गाइज देखो आई सी द लास्ट टाइम आई माइट बी कंडोनिंग दिस ऑफ बट विद थिंग दैट यू एक्सेप्ट टू डू सो वी ऑलरेडी हैव द लिस्ट वी हैव मेड द लिस्ट ऑफ द पीपल जिन्होंने डीएम करा है कुछ करा है जिन्होंने डीएम नहीं करा हो तो और शायद गलत है मतलब अब मत करना है एक्चुअल में बट ठीक है वी हैव अ लिस्ट हु हैव नॉट अटेंडेड द मीट सेम गोज फॉर एवरी वन एन यूट्यूब सो वी कैन कंडोन इट बट दिस अ थिंग यू हैव टू डू तो एवरी वन नोज वी आर इंस्टाग्राम हैंडल राइट तो यार डूइंग एनीथिंग दैट इज प्यूनेटिव आई इट से समथिंग जिससे आपका बहुत ज्यादा घाटा ना हो बट मे बी ओके वी गेट अ बेट बेटर सोशल रीच सो आई लास्ट सम वन फ्रॉम माई टीम टू काइंडली पिन द इंस्टाग्राम हैंडल एंड या यू हैव टू गेट जस्ट फॉलो द हैंडल राइट एंड इफ यू हैव बीन हैविंग इशूज अटेंडेंस टू आर फ्रॉम द ओपनिंग सेमनी टू मोइ जस्ट फर्स्ट लेक्चर एंड द सेकेंड वन टिल नाउ एवरीथिंग विल बी कंडोन्ड ऑफ यू हैव टू जस्ट फॉलो द चैनल the youtube handle right anyone in my team if they can pen it okay okay so i just had it in the google meet so yeah guys kisi ko bhi issue tha instead of dming aap bas insta page ko like kar diye insta page ko follow kar dijiye aapke sare paap dhul jayenge attendance ke regarding right kartik i guess you have you can check in the group in the chat yeah you can pen it so yeah guys this is the thing this is the redemption time and zyada hai nahi ho ki mohit sir ka lecture is about to start like as a one or two minute right so yeah please paap dho lijiye apna what else can i say best and uh, mohit sir are we ready to go yeah hamid we are certainly ready in case of there is another small other... request sir if we uh, oh. just a small request sir if we start at 97 i have just given them a small task right so guys we have time till 97 so you can rush the follow button doesn't take time multiple ids you may go for that option as well sabse like uh, follow kar do but uh, yeah and we start at 97 97 sharp thank you sir thank you people
welcome back everybody so the final conclusion that we were having with respect to the ultimate root cause of these case studies which have came to the forefront the purpose of this case study was directly inflicting upon the prime manifestation that what rti act has been doing since its inception and that is it is putting the power back into the hands of the people because it is the people of india and it is the preamble that enshrines that particular feeling within us the feeling of unity the feeling of togetherness so the power is coming into the hands of the people back so that is the ultimate result that we have from the rti act if we do the very threadbare analysis if we go after the extensive approach if we go for the liberal interpretation behind the very purpose of the act now moving forward first of all i having an announcement for you people that whatever i have made you study whatever we have covered shivang are you there shivang are you there may possible there is a miscommunication gap hello so, yeah yeah fair enough yes, so shivang verma is the cto of the very startup that i am running in the name of verdict world whatever we have covered we will be providing you the pdf of all those notes of all those material which will be helpful for the retention purpose of you people so i will be directly providing the material either to kartik or else to harmi so you will be getting by tonight itself and that was the basic reason why we got so much delayed for today's lecture so we'll have each and everything regarding the case laws the case studies all the core concepts which have been provided therein now moving forward the last stage of our lecture series and certainly that is that in this modern day paradigm who are the key players in this era of rti who are utilizing these power to the greatest extent possible and let's start it from the very thought process that we have in journal all of us have been law students all of us have been legal professionals to the greatest extent i believe how you are utilizing that probably you people not be having a first hand experience of filing an rti that is fair enough i completely respect it but on the other hand in your law colleges in your universities you must have seen people doing the same so who are these people other than citizens if we will be going into the specific classes are students utilizing the resources are students utilizing the powers which have been provided by the rti act how many people of you have gone through that what sort of rtis have been filed by them anybody yeah pushpendra so so in our university so seniors file rti against the university itself to disclose their answer sheets which were other, otherwise not provided to them so they file rti against the university itself so that's one example and so otherwise they file rti as for like Uh, uh, I have recently filed an RTI uh, about a Narega case. How the funds have not been utilized properly. They they keep getting carried forward for the next year, and then they are not utilized for current year. So this is a this has become a trend in certain states. So the about that. So in some ways. First of all, there are two things. If we relate it to the subject matter of PIL, that stands for public interest litigation. But many. Yet times honorable Delhi High Court and all the honorable other states High Courts and the Apex Court of our country, the Honorable Supreme Court, they have time to time reiterated the fact that as far as PILs are concerned, they are not going to the basic crux of public interest litigation. Rather, they are making it as a publicity interest litigation. So, do you think that your seniors who have been filing the RTI, they are doing for the very genuine cause? or for a meritorious nature in that aspect or it is a kind of a revolt from them so i really do not know because i don't know the details of it but so certainly your point is valid because i did my research about how pils have been abused misused to further certain nefarious agenda so so i wouldn't count this out it might be one of the reason because certainly this could be a reason because that's why if we do the criticism of the current rti act first of all we need to make ourselves aware we should be clear in our mind that nothing in this world is perfect because there is always a scope of improvement there is always a scope of amendment and one such basic thing in terms of criticism of this particular act is concerned then that is 
nowadays we are seeing a lot of rtis have been filed and as there will be a large number that will be going to the public authorities to their pios so certainly humanly it will not be possible to look after them in the limited time frame and that will be providing them the ground that they do have a reasonable cause because humanly it is not possible so many a times rti has also been misused so if you are utilizing your right in the meritorious nature only then this weapon will be serving to be the basic extent of your research more or less if we talk about the final year law students nowadays it is the trend that people are going for the interdisciplinary researches you will be combining two or three different disciplines for example you have taken a topic for your thesis or you have taken a topic for your dissertation that is certainly concerned with respect to two broader discipline for example banking and constitution banking and the procedural and substantive laws there so in order to make it qualitative enough instead of just looking after the quantitative approach so what you will be doing you will be filing rtis to the rbi to other banks in order to carve out the information so for research purposes for the researchers the scholars rti has been a boon for them because that will be authenticating their research rather it will be providing those scenarios those dimensions which were not easily available in the e resources or else in the textbooks or reference books that we do have among us so people are utilizing that more or less nowadays there have been a lot of people in our society in the name of social workers with all due respect in the name of politicians in the name of opposition leaders they have been trial their level best so that they can render a substantial change from the grassroots level because it is the law that is providing for that and nothing is wrong if they have been placed on record to that particular scenario any other example you people like to consider that what could be the modern day paradigm approaches towards rti how are the other citizens who are utilizing this proper power and mechanism by the way this is a very open ended discussion so there is no limit over that whosoever has something in him or her they wish to make a change they want to present the rightest image in the society with respect to the authorities that have been provided with so much funds with so much taxes in order to run the very work which they are obliged to do so it provides the power in their hand just that it should not be taken to that level that in the name of getting a fame in the name of getting famous so the meritorious applications will be kept on the pendency basis so that mm -hmm. shall be kept in mind now there was one more paradigm that's need to be discovered that's need to be encountered with as far as rti is concerned nowadays we are so much into the digital world so as far as the digitization came on place it came on record so the stats show the digital filing of rti has been so much elongated it has been increased over period of time because it will be providing solutions on the very limelight that it is coming to the forefront of the people because if something is registered digitally so people can't just put their liability away because it will be on record and but i have researched upon that nowadays the government is of the view that they will be using blockchain in various sector so rti could also be one because blockchain requires a hash algorithm because when it's getting be minted as a block and that block will be carrying an information so it will be providing for a long lasting solution because nobody will be escaping their life so these are the issues and by this i would like to just conclude now in case of somebody have question so we can just proceed with it yeah pushpendra so the last point you stated sir could you please uh, elaborate it a bit regarding the blockchain yeah yes yeah, sir interesting quite quite interesting that is interesting because the phd ram pursuing it is on the premises of that aspect it is the significance of blockchain technology and cryptocurrency visa vis corporate governance but will you be able to understand that in two or three minutes that is the challenge that i am having because if you have so, basic uh, knowledge regarding blockchain then i so may be able to provide you that so uh, i wrote a blog recently about how uh, uh, like smart contracts and blockchain technology together are going to uh, reform numerous sectors including like finance sector banking hospital sector everything so i do a basic understanding of what uh, like blocks are how they are like impenetrable how they, they uh, ensure transparency and how they can't be 
filtered uh, on the part of a single individual. So, sir, if that much is enough, sir, maybe I will I will be able to understand. That is fair enough because when you talk about blockchain, so there are two things. First is your public key, second is your private key. So once a data will be getting registered in a way of a block and will be becoming part of a blockchain, so that will be remaining with us and us for the entirety. So nobody will be escaping that. For example, if you talk about the very records that we have, so many times there have been forging of the records. Many a times we have seen that there have been frauds that are going on, and data could be leaked. It could be hampered. It could be destroyed. It could be lost. But blockchain is one such technology. If you will be putting there, so it will be providing you one-stop solution at least for the time being. Because in order to corrupt a blockchain, you need to corrupt all the blocks that have been minted there. So that is one way example of that. Fair enough. So government is exploring that thing out. That how to use this particular technology of blockchain in various sectors. And RTI is also one such sector. To the best of my knowledge. Yeah, Shantanu. So if what someone wants to corrupt a block and if they have to corrupt all the blocks, doesn't that uh, cause a, a security issue towards the government? Well, to be honest, as far as blockchain is concerned, currently it is the most secure thing that we are having. There's nothing more secure than a blockchain. Because I will not be shifting my diversion towards the passion that I withhold within my nerves. Well, I, I can speak on and on as far as the subject matter of blockchains are concerned, right? So let's restrict to RTI. I can see that there's so much interest regarding the hot and contemporary topics that we are having. Yeah, Karthika. Yeah, okay. As far as the evidentiary value is concerned, it is coming from a public authority, so it will be deemed to be a public document. So whatever the evidentiary value these documents have, first of all, there will be a certified copy that will be provided to you and it will be used as evidence and it is reliable in the court of law. Though, once you place the record, then certainly there will be other things around. There can be a debate, there can be arguments from both the angles, but yeah, the evidentiary value is pretty high as per the Indian Evidence Act, being a public document. Well, if you are willing to take my opinion, then certainly I'm of the view that the policy makers or the lawmakers they always go through various angles, various dimensions. And the fees which they have kept is so much reasonable in nature. So what is the purpose? Either they must have kept it for free. But why does that so? Because whenever you are looking for something, there must be a monetary value that should be annexed to it. So that somebody will take you as important enough. Because whosoever will be placing even a single rupee over that. So it will be helping those mindset that, yeah, they are serious enough in that particular regard. So placing a very reasonable or a very minimalistic fee, I believe that is not wrong. So it will not be an impediment. It will not be providing any other obstacle in order to render justice by way of RTI Act. As long as the fees is reasonable enough. If this fees could have been 10,000 rupees, for example, if we talk about various monitoring committees that have been made by the Honorable Supreme Court. So in order to just file a case, they will be listening to your case once you file a draft of 1 lakh rupees. So I will not say that that is reasonable enough. No, indeed not. But rupees 10, it is still reasonable enough. That is my standard. Yeah, Shantan. Sir, the uh, filing, uh, filing of RTI is free for people who are below poverty line. The fees in terms of general way, it is applicable upon all. Because rupees 10 has been kept by placing that particular factual matrix in the mind that it could be afforded by anybody. Just in case somebody is having any other problem, so we have a societal players for that who will be helping them out. Because till now, I have filed over 20 or 25 RTIs and all of them were so much meritorious in nature. And none of the RTI was having any substantial consequence upon me because the case was not 
under my purview. It was not meant for me. Rather, it is for the society. So all the fees have been paid by me because I can afford that. And just I said, the fees has been kept very minimalistic so that the persons who are receiving information, they should also not take it for granted. As already we have the Honorable Supreme Court precedent in which the Office of CGI has been coming under the purview of public authority. It is the Office of Record. So you can carve out the information. As far as other cases are concerned, you can directly lodge an RTI over for this because that will be replicating that why the justice is getting delayed. Merely for an example, if the pendency of the case is going on and on, there have been registering of so many cases. So after that, you can come to a conclusion that why the justice is getting delayed. Just in case if only five or 10 cases are getting registered every day and the judgments or orders that are coming are so much less in number. So both the things will be contradictory in nature, but let's suppose 500 cases are getting registered. So it is humanly not possible to look after each and other thing. So that could be termed to be the basic ground that why justice is getting delayed. So RTI will be helping in that particular regard because what exactly is happening by purview of RTI, by the jurisdiction of the RTI Act, all the public authorities are coming under the supervision of the citizens. So that is altogether the solution that we have. Any other question, Karthike? Okay. So do we have any question from the ongoing Google Meet? Yeah, Shantanu. So I just had a question, but that question does not concern this uh, ongoing classes. Can okay. I ask why why the death of uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri uh, was kept a secret? Yeah, no one has told me. I have not done any research. So please, you don't have to mind it. But uh, this will be going off the record. Yeah, wish me luck. Possible to have your views and on cryptocurrency and <clears throat> NFT and blockchain everything like in a different session sometime after. Uh, <laughs> we'll see to it. We'll definitely see to it. Well, certainly, I'm just about to publish my book upon cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. So that will be giving you a very keen sight because the textbooks and reference books that we have in the market, so they are so much technical in nature. So how come a student, a general student, maybe of any discipline, of any class, of any law school, any state, how they will be able to understand that? So. Currently, I haven't finalized the title, but it is something related to demystifying the art of cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. And I'm not making any paid marketing here. Indeed, not just that you asked. So I'm just telling you. So a book will be very soon, probably in a one month or a two months time frame. So that is the altogether thing that we have. So, oh. just so just like I just like to say, sir, the sessions have been very informative and sir, a phenomenal experience. Thanks a lot, sir. No, truly, it was my honor, and uh, I owe each and every word that I speak here. You people have been fantastic enough. This is not the very first time that I'm coming on camera in order to deliver these kind of brainstorming lectures. Just that the more you practice, the more you will be coming in front of enormous and educated people like you. So it will be making you improvise the very current version that you have on day by day basis. So truly, it's an honor. I'm highly obliged towards LEIC, towards our faculty coordinators, Dr. Zubair Ahmed Khan, sir, Dr. Narada Jamam, our student convener, Hamid, my CTO of Verdict World, Shivang Verma, my student, Karthik Esena, Samridhi Agarwal, Vansh Agarwal, Ms. Lakra. I'm not able to see the complete list. So in case if I'm missing out somebody's name, so I apologize for that. So certainly this was it. I had a very fantastic time with you people and we'll be collaborating again and again with LIC. And just simply thanks a lot.
thank you sir just thank you for your time <laughs> this is the best session i guess i can say <laughs> just thank you for your time more or so by tonight my cto will be contacting you they will be providing you all the notes which we have prepared for all the exceptional interns that we have mm-hmm. so that they will be getting something out of it they will mm-hmm. have something in their mind and other way around there there is a one small request that apart from verdict world we are also able to initiate one more entrepreneurial project that will be by the name of the top m and my instagram handle will be soon managed by the arp media team so in case we people can join us on instagram then certainly it will be a boon for us though for the legal professionals linkedin is quite preferable but i'm not merely restricted to law because i'm that person who lives at the present who lives for his passion so that's ultimately my personality that i do have so thanks a lot each and every one of you you people have been the show stoppers all the interns that we do have enjoy your time enjoy with the usllls just make each and everything good and after leaving our space after conclusion of this internship do something exceptional for you people because it is the learning that you have you people have joined this particular internship by working on your own whims and fancies you literally required these things out so just give your best take an educative learning take a skill in your hand so that after that you will be having something for your hand for the working and you never know that these minimalistic efforts will be leading to what higher heights you are even aspiring for your upcoming future so i take your people's leave wishing you all the very best though i'm quite young to say that god bless you but still it's fair enough so thanks a lot thank you amit थैंक यू सर थैंक यू फॉर अ टाइम एंड गाइस ओके सो पिछली बार हमने शायद सिर्फ गूगल मीट वालों के पाप धोए थे नाउ आई गेस वी आर करंटली लाइव एट YouTube आल्सो राइट कार्तिक के या परफेक्ट तो उस टाइम पे कोई टाइमर का था तो या वी आर लाइव ऑन YouTube एज वेल एज ऑन गूगल मीट सो आई विल जस्ट मेक द अनाउंसमेंट वी हैव बीन गेटिंग लोड्स ऑफ मैसेज टू माय टीम मी एंड माय टीम कि दे मिस द अटेंडेंस लाइंग दे मिस एक्स वाई जी डब्ल्यू एक्स वाई रीजन मतलब इसमें हम बहुत बहुत स्मार्ट है मैं जानता हूँ तो ठीक है वी जस्ट केम टू आई थिंक अगर आप हो सकता है किसे गलती है छूट गया हो या फिर आई जस्ट रिस्पेक्ट द आपकी क्रिएटिविटी जिससे आप ये सब करा तो आई जस्ट से इस सब को क्लियर आउट करने के लिए एंड एनीवन जिसने ये पाप नहीं किया मीट ना ज्वाइन करने का मीट ज्वाइन ना ज्वाइन करने का तो यू कैन फॉलो आर इंस्टाग्राम हैंडल एंड ठीक है सो आई थॉट कि कुछ तो होना चाहिए राइट ऐसे कैसे कंडोन कर दे We are not as good as the courts in India, right? We just don't condone condone like that. So, ha, yeah, pe cost lagi hai, cost hai. Please, our Instagram handle ko follow kijiye. You can look at the post, you can comment at it, you can share, and you can actually share our reviews, right? We are DM, our DMs will welcome you guys anytime, right? And secondly, our uh, Mohit sir, I guess, kuch jagah to mujhe unki fan club dikh rahi hai hi pe. So his handle is also there, please, and uh, please go on and follow it. And the ones, you know, एक दम अटेंटिव रहे हैं तो यार ठीक है हर बार पाप धोने की जरूरत नहीं होती उनने भी करने चाहिए तो I guess it's pretty much it. Anything else? I guess you want to share? Please you may, or else we'll just end the live stream for the interns. Perfect. So like, can I get some review? Like, कैसा था? Like you have got like comprehensive view, a true comprehensive view on RTI. So how was it? Right. Give me some reactions or something. Something in the comment box, guys. Okay, Sanjeevni has a question for sure. Please, Sanjeevni. Okay, guys, it was raised by mistake. ठीक है, thank you guys. So I'll just inform Abhi. You will be having your session again. कल. That will be more talking about the practical aspects of RTI. तो बाटिया सीख लिया सेक्शन के बारे में जान लिया बट इससे तो नहीं चलेगा ना रेवोल्यूशन तो पूरा गियर पे शिफ्ट लाके आती है राइट सो so, उसके लिए विल बी सीइंग कि व्हाट आर द प्रैक्टिकल एस्पेक्ट्स कि आप एक्चुअली आरटीआई फाइल कैसे करते हो तो थिंग्स अराउंड दैट अप्रोक्सीमेटली सेम टाइमिंग्स इफ एनी चेंजेस वील कन्वे यू लॉन्ग बैग इन योर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप एंड या आई गेस दैट इज इट थैंक यू फॉर अ गाइज पीपल थैंक यू फॉर अ टाइम पीपल सॉरी नॉट अ गुड